Hey there, this is Derek. Um, so it's the 23rd of December, year's almost over, 2018. Um, it's nice and sunny here in Thailand, and I'm actually awake during the daytime, which is awesome. Yesterday was my birthday, the winter solstice, also the darkest day of the year. Um, and I was really excited, even though I haven't really finished a lot of projects this year, um, I have been working on kind of a secret project, which is this 19th century treatise on solitude. Um, so I finally got it up and put it up on Kindle. It's like 150,000 words. It's a philosophical investigation into the subject. Um, so it's a little heavy. It's heavy reading, which is why it took me forever to clean it up and edit it. I couldn't find any original manuscripts. I kept hearing all these references to it, but I had to track down um, old photocopied books that had a lot of typos and pages were missing. So it took me a long time to, to fix it all. Um, like a year, a year of effort, basically. Um, and I don't know if everybody will like it, but I do think it's a really important subject. It's the subject of why creative people um, are more likely to be unhappy. It seems like if creativity is the bomb for the soul, if creativity is the thing that people, you know, inspires us, it gives us joy, it's what gives us passion, um, fills life with purpose, all of those things, and yet creative people often struggle with anxiety, depression, self-doubt, um, productivity and motivation problems. Those are some things I'm, I'm kind of interested in, in learning more about. I used to just focus on like the tactics um, and how to do the stuff, but I've come to realize if you want to be a full-time creative, which means you're just building your own content all the time, you're producing value to the world with your brain, with your creativity, um, creating something from nothing, there's part of that process which is always exhilarating. It's always a little bit of the stepping off the cliff. It's always pushing past your own boundaries. Even if you've done it before, even if you have experience, um, when you go into anything creative, you start with, I'm gonna finish and, and get to this goal, but you don't necessarily know how you're going to do it. A lot of that process is always gonna depend on inspiration and you don't know for sure that the muse is gonna come through for you. So it's normal to be stuck in the middle um, and feel isolated, feel like you, you're you never gonna make it, you're never gonna be able to write again or create again, your um, your well is empty, your creative well is dry, you, you've had all your best ideas, there's nothing else you can do. It's kind of a normal part of the process. And also, it can be really isolating to be a creative person um, and to make things for a living. It usually means you're home by yourself. A lot of creative people happen to be introverts and they feel um, more relaxed, more easygoing. They, they feel better at home by themselves with their routine or their, their um, solitude, basically. So the really interesting thing about this book, um, Genius of Solitude, is it's not actually just saying, you know, you should enjoy solitude to be more creative. That's not the point. Um, it notices that solitude is necessary for the creative process, but also that the creative process creates unhappiness because of the way it generates um, certain thoughts. And uh, William Alger, who's the author of this book, he wrote in uh, 19, 18, I don't know, 1787, I don't remember right now, um, 150 years ago, whenever that was. But he has these three orders of wretchedness. Um, and he has this really cool argument. It's basically the whole book is like a study of the topic. Um, but he also just has such a beauty with words, a way of writing that, that's really powerful. Um, this is really like a book that's meant to be spoken out loud. So there's a whole bunch of passages that I just think are really moving and inspirational, which I've turned into um, image quotes for my blog. I'm gonna do a piece about book marketing with Pinterest sometime th this week. So I'll kind of show you what that looks like for this book. Um, I launched it yesterday for my birthday. It's already number one new release. All I did was send out an email to my list and post it casually on Facebook. I didn't really even ask anyone to buy it. So um, that's a pretty good start. I don't think this will make tons of money because it's a really dense book, but I do think that it's an important subject that a lot of people are passionate about and concerned with. So I, I had e um, emails today, people writing back to me saying, you know, thank you so much for the email. This email spoke to me on a deep level because I also struggle with depression or isolation. Um, I think it's a pretty common thing that isn't talked about enough. There's a lot of books about creativity. There's a lot of books about avoiding depression or anxiety or getting past it. Um, there's not really anything about why depression or anxiety exists for creative people, how it comes about, what are the root causes. Um, and if you don't know the root causes, 
you can't fix it. You can you can ignore it, or you can try to keep yourself happy with with positive motivation, um, but it's forced. It's it's you're always convincing yourself to ignore this um, state of yourself that's there. I think a better way is to embrace all of the feelings that come with the creative process um, and to understand them better. So I really think this book dives deep in understanding why creative people are more likely to be unhappy and what we can do about it. Um, I'm also just kind of using this as background. Now that it's out, I'm going to focus on my next book, which is Creative Confidence, which will be kind of a, a shorter version um, with some other stuff I, I realized in my PhD research, some other really cool historical material that's not really common yet. Um, and that'll be more like a general nonfiction book that I'll actually market because I think it'll help a lot of people. Um, that's what's going on. I'm also editing today. There's Christmas carols in the in my favorite coffee, coffee shop and a Christmas tree, but it's bright and sunny in Thailand. Um, but I'm editing. I still have another week of December. Um, I don't think I'll get another novel finished this month, but I'm hoping that in January I can put out two novels and maybe a nonfiction book. I have a bunch of stuff that's kind of half finished now. Um, and my plan for next year my, is the same plan I failed this year. This year I wanted to get 12, 12 novels done, 12 books done a year. Um, I'm, I want to be the type of person who is capable of doing that. I know that I can be with um, persistence and practice, so that's my continuing goal. I actually only published one novel this year, and this is my first nonfiction book, which I didn't really write. I only edited it and added a foreword. Um, but I'm hoping that I've learned a lot of valuable skills this year that will come into play next year. So in 2019, um, I'm really focused on my writing. I'm going to fix up all my other stuff so it doesn't take up very much of my time. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about this week, about goal setting and 2019 plans. And you can tell me um, what you're interested in. But for now, um, check out this book. Let me know in the comments if you feel like being creative makes you unhappy in any way or, or why you feel stuck or when you feel um, isolated or lonely, what solitude means to you. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts or your feedback. You can also, um, once you check this book out, leave a review on Amazon. That would be awesome. Thanks. Bye-bye.